Team Rippers, let's get ready to make a bag. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kasaya and this is Saya Swag. I have a brand new pattern from Shambhala Bags today. I love Sammy's patterns. They are some of my favorite patterns. They are so classy and elegant. Just amazing, amazing patterns. So the one we're sewing up today is called the Zara Bag. And these are the two that I made. Look how pretty they are. Oh, I love them so much. Okay, so in the pattern, she has you doing grommets like this. There is two on each side, so four total. You put your gate ring through that, and then you put your crossbody strap on. Absolutely love it. I'm a big fan. Do grommets if you have grommets. Not everybody has grommets, so I thought I would show you maybe an alternative to that. And so in the video, we do this bag and I added some connectors there to the side with some triangle connectors and put gate rings through it. So it kind of gives that look still, it has that flattened look right there for your connectors, but it's not grommet. So there's another option. I'm sure there's multiple ways. You could do a single grommet here and a single grommet here as well. Um, this bag is adorable. It is smaller. See how small it is? Um, I did both of mine out of all vinyl. I used floral, not floral. I used cotton on the inside. So you lift up the flap. There's a slip pocket. You open this up. It's got double magnetic snap there. So it's nice and secure. And on the inside, you have a zipper pocket back here. You could add a slip pocket on the other side if you wanted to, it's up to you. Um, it's just an adorable small crossbody. I absolutely love it. Not difficult to make. I don't think it was difficult at all. I would say the most um, difficult part of this first one I made was installing these grommets because they were screw on grommets. I think the press grommets are a little bit easier um, to install, but the screw ones look just really classy. So up to you. Okay, so the bag we do in the video today is this one right here. Again, I did all vinyl. I did my faux piping along the front and back. That is an option. You don't have to do the faux piping or real piping if you don't want to. Um, I did a twist lock on this one and there's my front pocket. I just love it so much. Um, magnetic snaps and then my zipper pocket on the inside. Oh, so pretty. And then I used these triangle connectors and gate rings and a crossbody strap. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I take you through step by step. Hopefully this helps you figure out how to do this pattern. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. I used foam, Decaville Heavy on the bottom, and woven for both of my bags. Um, you only need a couple of rivets. Yeah, go check it out. Pattern will be below in the description if you want to purchase. If you just want to watch the video, go for it. Um, I think this is a winner in my book. Okay, let's start going. All right, let's go over our pieces for the Zara bag. I am using all vinyl and cotton on the inside for all my pockets and lining. I have interfaced all of my cotton pieces with a woven. Um, I have done Decaville Heavy on my bottom piece out of my seam allowances. And then I will be basting foam to the majority of my pieces on the exterior. If you are worried about the thickness of your seams, keep all the interfacing and foam out of your seam allowances. My machine doesn't have trouble with it, so I'm leaving it in. Um, and here we go. All right, so I have my crossbody strap all cut out. Nothing fancy about that. Just the length of my vinyl is usually what I do for my crossbody straps. Um, all right, these are my exterior bottom and um, lining pieces. Okay, I have my foam already basted on that and then there's Decaville Heavy under that. 
my exterior gusset pieces, two of those, and I have my foam based it on. My exterior uh, flap panels, so this will be the little flap that goes over, two of those. And these are the shapes and sizes that you need to keep track of because they're just slightly different and it will make a difference if you use the wrong one, okay? So make sure all of these are labeled. This is my back exterior panel top. This is my front exterior panel top. And again, I don't have any of these front and back panels interfaced yet. I will do that after I put them together and baste foam on those. My exterior pocket top band my exterior pocket center and I will be adding my twist lock um, to this piece right here and then I will be adding my nameplate to this piece. My exterior pocket sides, so this is the front side pieces, they should be mirrored, you should have two of those mirrored. My back exterior bottom panel, um, exterior pocket lining, okay, the exterior pocket lining. And these are all shaped similar too, so I'm telling you, keep them labeled, okay? Um, this one is my front exterior pocket. And then we go on to lining pieces. Um, I'm also doing faux piping on my bag, so it's just fake piping. I'm just using strips of vinyl and I will be folding, I put double-sided tape, I'll be folding those in half and putting them where the piping is for the bag. And it just gives a really cute little pop of an accent. So I would highly suggest trying it. I think it looks really good on her bags. I love how she uses piping on a lot of her bags. You can leave it out if you don't wanna do it. That's always an option. Okay, so I have two lining contrast bands. My snaps, magnetic snaps, will be going on that. There is um, two lining gusset contrasts. So those will go at the top of your lining gusset pieces. My two pieces of my gusset lining. My inside pocket piece. So there will be a zipper pocket on the inside. I'm just doing it very basic. I'm not doing anything fancy with that. You could put a, you know, a, a pretty vinyl facing, zipper facing on it, whatever you wanna do. I'm just doing just a regular zipper. And then my two lining pieces. So hardware for this is different depending on what you're doing. I do have a twist lock for my flap. I have my strap uh, crossbody pieces. I'm doing a 3 4 inch crossbody strap. I have two magnetic snaps. I have a zipper and um, a zipper pull. And then for this bag, I'm sure you saw in the intro video, I'm trying something different with the connector and the gate ring, so we'll see if it works. I'm sure I already have told you if it did or didn't. Um, I just, I did grommets for the first bag and I love grommets so much and they are so awesome, but I wanted to kind of give a different option and see if I could get kind of a, a fun little look going um, for this bag. So we'll see how it turns out. And that is all the pieces we need, so let's start sewing this bag. I am going to start by just prepping my crossbody strap and my connectors and getting those just out of the way. They are both very simple crossbody strap. You just take it, put double-sided tape down the middle, and then we're gonna fold our raw edges in and then fold it again and sew down both sides. Same thing for my connectors. I have just folded my raw edges in and we'll be fold, uh, sewing down each side of my connectors. And then we'll go to the next step in the pattern.
Okay, I will be going back off camera and putting a rivet right here and right here on my crossbody strap. I'm gonna put that aside. And then for this bag, I'm using four connectors. They are cut um, two inches wide by three inches tall because my connectors are going to be these little triangle rings. So I'm just going to fold my raw edges in and I am going to stitch down each side of these connectors. All right, so there are my four connectors. I'm just going to put them on just like that and just baste that closed. It'll just be easier to put on my bag. Okay, so I have all my connectors done. I have my strap, uh, my crossbody strap done, and we will move on to the next step. We're gonna start by piecing the front pocket together, the front slip pocket. So I have my front pieces here. You're gonna take your center piece with one of your side pieces, right sides together, and line those up. And then we're gonna sew that at the seam allowance mentioned in the pattern. All right. All right, and then you're gonna turn this towards the side, okay? You're gonna turn your seam allowance towards this outside panel here, and we're gonna top stitch along the side panel. Okay, we're gonna get the other side and do the exact same steps. We're gonna stitch that together at our seam allowance. We're gonna turn it and then top stitch. Okay, once that is pieced, you're going to take this next piece. It is the exterior pocket top band. Make sure you're grabbing the right piece because from experience, I have gra grabbed the wrong piece before. <laughs> you're gonna flip that over. Make sure that it gets um, more narrow at the top of this piece. So you gotta make sure it's going the right way. All right, we're gonna sew that at the seam allowance. And then we will flip it up and chop stitch this. And you're gonna have your seam allowance going up towards the top 
band that we just sewed on and we're going to top stitch along that band. All right, so after you have those pieces on, we're going to add our turn lock and then I'm gonna add my nameplate as well right there. Okay, so I have my marking for my turn lock. I've already kind of figured that out and made my little lines. I put my washer on top of that and use a little knife and mark where I want the lock to go. So I'm going to insert my lock. And then you always want to put something behind that, especially if it's just vinyl and there's no other interfacing with it. So I cut out a piece of um, Decaville Heavy, a scrap piece, put some lines through it. There we go. And your washer on top. Okay, that's what the front looks like. I'm going to put a piece of duct tape over the back just so it's protected from the prongs rubbing on anything else. And then I also kind of marked and put the lines for my nameplate, if I can find it, <laughs> right here. I did it about three and a half inches up from the bottom. And then I do the same thing for my nameplate, protection-wise. And cover. All right, so those are my front pieces on that, all ready to go. Okay, what have we got next? Let's finish this pocket up. All right, so now you wanna take the exterior pocket lining. All right, and we're gonna put that right sides together along the piece that we just did. And we're gonna pin that, clip that along the top. And we're gonna sew that on at our seam allowance. Okay. Because now we're making the slip pocket on the front of the bag. All right, and then we're gonna flip that up and over. And then I'm gonna top stitch the top of that panel. Just giving a good finger press and roll that seam and flip it in place. Okay. Front, back, and now we're gonna top stitch that. All right, so there's my front slip pocket piece so far. Okay, so I'm gonna get my front exterior panel bottom and my front exterior panel top and put those together. Sew them at your seam allowance, just like before. Okay, you're gonna flip this up, but you're gonna turn your seam allowance down towards the bottom panel. So it's gonna be going down towards this lining and I'm gonna top, 
top stitch along the lining part of it. All right, so once you have that, you want to take the front pocket piece we finished and we're going to put those two together. All right, so they should line up just about like that. And I am going to baste these two pieces all along the three sides to make one panel. And my pocket's a little uneven right here. That's okay. I'm just going to trim this up a tiny bit. There we go. Okay. All right. I'm going to baste those on together. Basting is always done at about an eighth of an inch and a longer stitch length, like a top stitch length. Okay, so that's what you should have now. You got your slip pocket in there, your turn lock on. We're gonna set this aside and I'm gonna get out my flap pieces, which that's not my flap pieces. This is my flap pieces, okay. You can glue these two pieces together I am going to get my spray glue and I'm just going to spray one side and put them together and then we will sew this up. Okay, so I have these two glued together. I just used some spray glue. You could always use some double-sided tape as well if you wanted to, just keep it out of your seam allowance that you're stitching. Um, okay, so these don't have to fit perfectly together yet because what we're gonna do is we're going to stitch this at a 1 4 inch seam allowance and then we're going to trim it down evenly so it's all nice and neat okay so i'm going to stitch this first Okay, so here is my flap. Looks good, front and back. I'm going to now take my scissors and trim this down evenly. Now, if you wanted to, you could use some edge coat paint and paint your flap so it doesn't so it's not left with a raw edge, it's up to you. I'm gonna leave mine raw. Okay, 
So now it's all nice and smooth and it looks really nice. Okay, so next step, we're gonna grab our back piece, our back exterior panel. Okay, I am going to add the other part of my twist, twist lock at the end of the video when the bag's all put together so I can make sure I put it where I want it. If you want to install it right now, you totally can do that, but I'm going to wait. All right, so I'm just clipping my center, so I'm sure to get my flap all nice and centered on this piece, okay? So if one side of your stitching looks better than the other side, you want that nice side down um, because it's going to be flipping over, and this will be the right side of your flap. All right, so I'm going to add up those centers right here and baste that on first and then I will add my top panel piece. Okay, so here is my top, I'm double checking. Exterior, back exterior panel top. Okay, I'm gonna add that on. All right, attach that at your seam allowance. Okay, so in the pattern she has you flipping this up and top stitching it down because then later you're going to flip this up and put rivets in it. And it's because, I mean, the seam allowance gets pretty thick right here, right? It's a pretty thick seam allowance. Um, I didn't love the look of the rivets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch my flap up like this. So it is up to you which way you wanna do it. Um, if you wanna add the rivets, go for it. I'm gonna just try it this way and see how it comes out. I think I will also, so I top stitched my flap up. So it's up to you which way you wanna do it. I'm also going to add a couple rivets right here too, just to give it a little bit extra strength. And let's see, the next step, we are going to add our foam interfacing to the front and back pieces. If you haven't done that yet, I'm just gonna baste mine on and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so I have my foam interfacing just basted onto the back of my pieces. Next step is you want to add piping if you wanna do piping. Mine's just a strip of vinyl folded in half and basted along the sides. I will show you how I did it. So I already did the back piece. I'm gonna do the front. Um, on her pattern pieces, there is a marking for where you begin and end your piping. So follow those markings, transfer them to your pieces. I'm gonna get my faux piping here and I'm going to be clipping the raw edge onto the edge of my bag. All right, and I'm just going to clip it all the way around. The important part that I have been learning, I learn as I go too, is that I really need to clip the curves on the piping and stretch it around those curves and it will help the piping lay nicer and look better when your bag is completed. So I'm gonna put 
little notches. They are not big. They're like a eighth of an inch in my piping here along this curve on the bottom. Okay. And then as I'm going to attach it here, I'm going to be stretching it and kind of pulling it around that curve. And that's going to help it look better and not be all wrinkled and weird when the bag is done, okay? It worked pretty good on my other bag that I did for this pattern, my first one. Worked on the practice bag. All right, and then I'm gonna snip again here on this curve. Okay, and back up. I think the trickiest part of piping is getting the, where you ease it on and off even. That's the hardest part for me at least, is getting this part up here like even with each other. Um, so I kind of angle it off right at that marking there all right, and that's where I'm going to begin my stitching. And I am just basting this piping on. That is how we do it. This is how we do it. All right. I'm just gonna trim those off. And then we are going to put together our gusset pieces. And then we'll add it onto our main panel pieces. Okay, so here's my gusset. And here's my bottom piece. Okay. And pay attention because these ones have a different seam allowance than the rest of your pattern. This one has a bigger seam allowance for putting this together, so pay attention to that. So I'm gonna clip right sides together, my bottom piece and my one of my gusset pieces, and I'm gonna sew that at that bigger seam allowance, okay? And this part I'm gonna do a little bit different than she has in the pattern just because I have foam in my seam allowance. Instead of making it go to just one side, I'm going to flatten it and top stitch down both sides. So that part's up to you. If you don't have all this extra foam in your seam allowance, then um, just top stitch it to one side. But if you're like me and you did the foam in your seam allowance, this might be a little bit easier when putting the whole bag together. So I'm flattening my seam allowance and I'm just stitching down both sides.
okay? Now get your other gusset piece, right sides together and repeat those same steps. Okay, so that is our finished gusset. We are now going to add this to our main panel pieces. Okay, so I've gone ahead and clipped my centers for both my um, bottom piece and my front and back pieces. I'm gonna take my gusset and my front piece. I'm gonna go right sides together and flip it up. I'm going to clip the bottom center first along here. And then I'm going to take it to the top and clip that. Then you can work in that curve on the corner after you get all of your bottom and top pieces clipped. Okay. I'm gonna take this side in now and clip this to the top. Okay, so you may need to put a couple of little snips into your gusset here to get it to lay nicely into your piece. Just little, because your seam allowance isn't very big. that's clipped it should oh yeah see how nicely that just falls into there there you go finish clipping that in it should fit almost perfectly the way she has this measured out my second one and it fit perfectly as well first time so all right Nice and neat. All right, we're gonna do this other side, same thing. Kind of just push it in and it'll fit right there. All right, we're gonna sew this on, gusset side up. Let our seam allowance go nice and slow. Okay. Here we go.
All right, you wanna take a peek inside, make sure everything looks good, my corners look nice. Yep, and we're gonna go ahead and repeat for the other side. Okay, we're gonna take that and do the same thing and sew that onto the other side. Okay, so we're gonna turn this right side out and let's see what we have. I need to figure out where I'm going to attach my connectors before I go any farther so I don't forget that part. All right, oh, it's cute. Love the shape of this bag. Good, all right, all right, so, so far, this is what we have. And our flap will go right there. We just need to put the little thing on it. Look how nice that looks. Love it. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to put my connectors right here and here, all right? Because the bag kind of sits like this. It's meant to have grommets going right here and here. So if I put my connectors here, it's still gonna have that same kind of effect on it. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I think I figured out the way I am going to add these connectors. So, hmm, I've got them on this side already because when our bag is done, it's going to be like this, right? And so these connectors will be flipped up and I'm going to put a gate ring through them right there. And that's how my bag is gonna hang. Kind of like it. So there's an option if you didn't wanna do the grommets. Um, I'll show you how I did it. So I just marked one fourth of an inch in from the side seams. And then I put my connector a half inch mark there. So it's gonna stick out a half inch and I'm going to baste them onto my bag right there on each side. And as I baste them on there, I'm also going to be basting this seam flat just so everything is put together nicely as well in the end. So I'm basting it. And so I think it's important that these are all the same height so they all line up when I do add my gate rings. All right, so I'm just going to baste those on right there. I'm just gonna sew on over to my next one. I'm gonna protect my back foot though. Make sure this other one is still in the right place. I have no idea if this is gonna work. <laughs> I think the idea sounds good. <laughs> So I guess we'll find out. Okay, so those are where I have put my connectors, all right? Also, if you're doing it this way, you need to make sure you have a machine that's going to be able to sew through these layers, obviously, um, and mine can do it. So just keep that in mind as well. All right, let's go to the lining. 
So we're going to add a zipper pocket to our lining. I'm not doing anything fancy, any fancy kind of way. I'm just doing a very basic zipper pocket here. Um, I'm just lining it up kind of where I think it needs to go a little bit down from the top because you are adding a um, top lining piece to this. All right, so I'm going to sew around my rectangle zipper box. This is very basic zipper installation. Okay, I'm just going to cut open this box and then I will take it to my iron and I will iron this all to the back and then we will install our zipper piece. I'm just cutting it out. Okay. Just like that. I'll pull it through the back. And I am going to press that nice with my iron and we'll be right back. Okay, it's all pressed. I've got my zipper. I want my pull going, I want it opening from left to right, okay? So I'm gonna take off the bottom tape first insert that and then the top and then I will sew around. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna sew around that. Now we just close this up. We don't have to leave the pocket open because we are pulling through the lining and not the pocket. So don't worry about that. Although you could leave it open if you wanted to do the double, the double pull through, I guess is what it's called. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna call it, where you pull the lining through the pocket, close up the lining and then close up the pocket. You could totally do that.
I'm going to be trimming down my zipper a little bit because it's just a little bit too long. Ooh, my, my thread got weird right there. I'm going to sew over that real quick just to make sure it's good. All right, and then let's close up this side over here. All right, I'm gonna trim the sides of this pocket down because I really don't want it in my seam allowance. So it needs to be trimmed just a little bit. Okay. And then I will just make sure I melt what I can of that zipper in there. Okay, so we're gonna add our top pieces here. I'm gonna keep my pattern piece close though because it has the markings for my um, snap, my magnetic snap, okay? So we're going to be sewing these on at our seam allowance. Yep, regular seam allowance, okay? We're gonna sew these on to the top of our lining pieces. We'll flip them up, we'll top stitch, and then we will add our magnetic snaps to this top lining piece. We're gonna flip it up and our seam allowance is gonna go down towards our lining and we are top stitching through our lining piece, okay? one side all done we're gonna repeat and do the same thing to the other lining piece if you want to add a little slip pocket or something on this one you totally can go for it it's just a little piece it would be a little slip pocket but it would work Okay, there's our two lining pieces. So the next step is we wanna add our magnetic snaps and there are markings on the pattern piece. So what I like to do is I just lay the pattern piece down and I'm gonna mark where my snaps go on the back of this. I'm gonna do that to both pieces and then I will add my magnetic snaps. The process of adding these is with prongs, just like the twist lock and the nameplate that I already did. Same process. All right, so let's add those. Okay, so I've already installed three of the snaps. So here's my third one right here. Okay, I'm gonna show you how I did it. So there's my marking, here's my washer, I put the center of that washer right on that dot that I made, that center marking. And I'm gonna take my little blade tool and make two little lines right there where the holes are for the prongs. All right, I'm gonna take my snap, put it through those holes. I'm going to use a piece of Decaville Heavy. I already have it um, cut out for those prongs. Maybe, <laughs> come on, there we go. And then I put my washer on. And then I flatten it out. 
You can like press it against your mat to flatten it out if your fingers can't quite do it. Okay, and then cover it up. Protect it with a piece of tape. And that's how you install all of these magnetic snaps. And now I have all four and they should all fit nicely together. Looks good. All right. My two lining pieces are done. We're going to, going to do the lining gusset. So here are my lining gusset pieces and the accents. So you need these, what is this called? Lining gusset contrast, okay? These go at the top of our pieces. So we're just going to put these on the top here, we're gonna sew that at our seam allowance, and then we will top stitch. You are going to flip it down, so your seam allowance is gonna go down towards your lining, and you are gonna top stitch along your lining just like you did your main panel pieces. All right, so there's my first one. So go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. Okay, so once that is done, we're now going to attach these two pieces to the bottom lining piece. And we are doing that the same exact way that we did our exterior, except the top stitching part. I'll just fold the seam to one side and top stitch because it's not that big of a deal with the lining because I don't have that bulk. Make sure you're using the right seam allowance. It's a little bit bigger for the gusset pieces, okay? Okay, and then I'm gonna repeat for the other side. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and fold this on the bottom part and I'm going to clip my centers down here. And that's gonna prep us for adding it to our lining. And I think I need to clip my, no, nope, that one's got it. Let me clip this one. And go ahead and clip the centers of your lining pieces as well. I'm gonna clip the top too. That may help with the assembly in the end. I don't know. It's just always good to have everything clipped, guys. All right. Now we are going to put our lining together. Okay, so we're going to start adding the gusset to the lining pieces. It is the same exact assembly as the exterior pieces. So I'm gonna start with the bottoms and then I'll go to the top edges and then we'll fit in the curves. So on, I'm not gonna do it on this one, but on the other side, on that side, I will leave um, an opening in the bottom of my lining so I won't sew a good chunk of the bottom. And that is what we will pull our bag through when we're done. Make sure this part lines up up here. That's kind of where I clip first is right there because you want those two seams to be lined up with each other. It will look better if it does that. Okay. 
Okay, and then I'm gonna put some snips into my gusset. You can do a little bit bigger snips on the lining because your seam allowance will be bigger. You will increase your seam allowance through most of the lining so you get a nice tight fit into your bag. This one's broken. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna start with my seam allowance and then I will increase my seam allowance as I go around. So I'll start right here at my normal seam allowance then I will increase it all the way down, okay? But make sure that you go back to your set seam allowance up at the top or else it won't line up with your bag. Okay. So there is my lining. I am going to just trim down here and along my curves. I don't want this extra seam allowance here. And then I will add on the other side and I will leave a big, nice big opening on the bottom of the other lining. And we'll go from there. Our lining is done. I left a hole in the bottom there. 
And now we are going to add the two pieces together. All right, so we wanna take our exterior and put it inside our lining right sides together, okay? Make sure if you want your zipper pocket on the back that that's going in towards the back of your exterior. And that will, that should line up together if you do it that way. All right, just push that down in there. And I'm gonna line up my side seams first. All right, here we go. Okay, just like that. These are my strap connectors that I put on there. That's what's poking out if you're wondering. <laughs> I know it looks weird. All right. Don't, don't uh, be afraid to push that bag in there. It won't hurt it. Okay, so once you have your sides all clipped together, you can start doing your main panels here. side. Make sure your little flap is pushed out of the way there. Okay, now we are going to sew around the top of this bag with a bigger seam allowance, with a 3 8 seam allowance, okay? So sew around the top at a 3 8 and then we will turn the bag. Yay!
Okay. Go ahead and take a look at that. Make sure everything looks good. Looks good. Okay, I will probably trim these down just a tiny bit. Um, and I might sew another, yeah, I'm going to do one more little row of stitching up at the top here on these connectors. Because why not? Let's give it a little extra reinforcement. And then we'll turn the bag through. Let's turn this through the bottom hole here. Here we go. wasn't too hard to turn especially if you're using foam it's a little bit softer and easier if I was using Decaville light that would be a bit more difficult but I think it would be totally doable all right we're gonna stick this in just to get an idea of what we're looking at oh I think it turned out cute here is our bag so I think our connectors are going to work. I kind of like it. There's the front, and there's the back. All right, so what we have to do now is we need to top stitch through all these layers. So this is where having an industrial comes in handy because I don't think uh, you'd be able to use the materials I used and stitch through all of this stuff right here. So just as a side note there. Be aware I would definitely do grommets if that was the case and the grommets are adorable the way she has them in the pattern I do love the grommets I just like finding different ways to do things and I thought this would be a fun different um, option but the grommets are awesome as well all right So I'm just kind of rolling the seam and clipping it into place here. I'm going to have to be super careful not to rip any of my vinyl as I top stitch. I'll use lots of help from scrap pieces of like um, fat, uh, leather and vinyl behind my foot and underneath and that should help. Okay. Huh. Here we go. It's all clipped into place. I'm going to go ahead and top stitch this bag. So here's where I'm going to use the help of other things. So I'm going to fold a piece of vinyl up and stick it under my foot. And it's going to help me get over this seam right here. Okay. Okay. 
And then I need to put it underneath coming down so it doesn't rip from the back. Totally doable. We are all top stitched. Let's see what we got. I think it looks pretty good. Yep. Didn't rip any vinyl. <laughs> That's always good. All right. So there's my top stitching. Last, well, not last. Second to last, maybe? Yeah. Second to last thing we need to do is close up the hole in the bottom of our bag. And then I just need to add the rest of the turn lock on my flap and then we're done. Yay. All right, so let's just close up this lining. Super easy, just fold your raw edges under and we will sew it shut. Okay, just like that. Here we go. this in. Everything's sewn up. Looks good. All right. So all we need to do, I'm curious, I'm going to put my strap on real quick and see what it looks like. So I've got these gate rings and I'm going to stick them through just like that. It's kind of cute. Different. And there you go. There's an alternative to the grommets if your machine can handle it. <laughs> All right, we will go ahead and I'm going to add the turn lock here and then we are done. Okay, I'm just going to add the other part of the turn lock to this. So the back of these turn locks is a great little guide for um, your lock. So I want it probably you want it to have just a little bit of space. So I'll probably want to do it about right here. I just want to make sure that's centered. Looks good. And what I'm going to do, maybe just a touch to the side here. Okay, I just draw out this little oval shape and the screws here. About right there, it looks good. Yeah, all right. So lucky me, I have these punch die sets. You can get them off Amazon and there's one that fits 
this turn lock I carry on my website almost exact. Um, it cuts out the exact amount that you need for this. So it's pretty dang easy. So I take my press, it's got these press plates on it, and I'm just gonna line this up and get it centered as best I can. That looks right. And then I'm gonna take this and press it. And I'm gonna have to move it over just a little bit here to get this other half here. And it cuts right through, look at that. Super easy. All right, and then I want to add my lock. So I'm gonna put this part on the bottom here. And you want it to stretch just a little bit around it. You don't want it to be too big because if it's too big, your piece will slide. It won't be great. You want it to be a little tight to where you have to stretch it a little bit. All right, and then we just add the screws. You could add some glue on there if you want as well. It's up to you. And that is my turn lock. Yay! <laughs> I added my crossbody strap. Look how cool that looks. I'm kind of digging that. That idea actually worked out. It happens sometimes. <laughs> there is our Zara bag. Oh my gosh. I love it. Yay. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have any questions for me, please ask them down in the comments below and I will try to answer them as best I can. And thanks for watching guys. See you next time.